Hello and welcome to this video. In this video, we are going to do a counting question from paper 3, variant 31, May June 2019. Question 4 based on ratio analysis. The question states that the director of MPLC have provided the following information from the financial statement for the ended 30th June 2018. The owner's share capital consists of 1 million shares of $1 each. Profit for the year as $180,000. Dividend paid during the year was total to $80,000 and dividend yield was 5%. In the event of the question, we are asked to calculate the market price of one ordinary share. For this, the information given is dividend yield. For dividend yield, we have the formula that dividend yield is equal to dividend per share divided by market price of the share. If we take the market price of the share to the other side and dividend yield to the denominator, we will have the market price of one share is will be equal to dividend per share divided by dividend yield. Let's first calculate the dividend per share. For dividend per share, the information given here is the total dividend is $80,000 and the number of ordinary shares issued are 1 million shares. So, dividend per share for ordinary shareholders will be dividend paid divided by number of issued ordinary shares which will be equal to $80,000 divided by 1 million which will be equal to 8 cents. And dividend yield is given as 5% which can also be written as 5 by 100 or 0 0.05. Therefore, the market price of one ordinary share will be equal to dividend per share divided by dividend yield which will be equal to 8 cents divided by 0 0.05 and hence the value for one ordinary share in the market is $1.60. In the bit of the question, we are asked to calculate the following two two decimal places. First, we have earning per share. For earning per share, we have the formula as net profit minus preference share dividend divided by number of issued ordinary shares. As we don't have preference shares here, so preference share dividend will be zero. Hence, earning per share will be $180,000, which is the profit for the year divided by number of ordinary shares issued, which are 1 million. We get earning per share as 18 cents. Then next, we have to calculate the price earning ratio, which is equals to market price per share divided by earning per share. Market price per share was calculated in the first bit as $1.60 divided by the Earning per share which we have calculated just now as 18 cents, we get the price earning ratio as 8.89 times. Then dividend covered, dividend covered have a formula as dividend covered is equals to profit available to pay the ordinary shareholders divided by the ordinary dividend paid. As we don't have preference shares here, hence the total profit will be available to be paid for the ordinary shareholders hence we take the profit for the year which is $180,000 divided by the ordinary dividend paid which was total as $80,000 we get dividend covered as 2.25 times. Furthermore, additional information is provided which states that VPLC is a competitor of MPLC and the director of VPLC also prepared accounts to 30th June. The following information for both the companies for the year ended 30th June 2018 is available. MPLC, VPLC gross margin is 50% for MPLC and for VPLC it is 45%. Profit margin is 18% for MPLC and 20% for VPLC. Return on capital employed is 15% for MPLC and 18% for VPLC. Year ratio is 0% for MPLC and 15% for VPLC. Market price per share is calculated in the A bit of the question for MPLC and $2.50 for VPLC. Earning per share is in calculated in the first part of the B bit for MPLC and $0.20 cents for VPLC. Price earning ratio is calculated in the second part of bid B for MPLC and 12.5 times for VPLC. Dividend covered is calculated in third part of bid B for MPLC and 4 times for VPLC. In the C bit of the question, we are asked to analyze the performance of both the companies by considering only the gross margin, profit margin and return on capital employed. Gross margin is equal to profit, uh, gross profit times 100 divided by revenue. This shows that Gross margin is directly proportional to gross profit and gross profit is calculated by taking revenue from where we subtract all the cost of sales. We get gross profit. So to have a higher gross profit, we the company need to have a higher revenue or low cost of sales. 
in both the cases the company will have a higher gross profit if we see here mplc is having a gross margin of 50 percent and vplc is having a gross margin of 45 percent which shows that mplc is having a higher gross profit and this may be because it may have a higher revenue because of higher selling price or lower cost of sales when compared to vplc then profit margin is equal to profit for the year times 100 divided by revenue. So profit margin is directly proportional to profit for the year. That is higher the profit for the year, higher will be the profit margin. And profit for the year is calculated by taking gross profit from where we subtract all the expenses. So to have a higher profit for the year, the company should have a higher gross profit or lower expenses. When we see here, MPLC is having a profit margin of 18% and VPLC is having a profit margin of 20%. Even though MPLC is able to make a higher gross profit, it is not able to make a higher profit margin and this will be because MPLC is not able to control its expenses or MPLC is having a very high um, expenses because of which it is not able to have a higher profit for the year when compared to VPLC and return on capital employed is calculated by taking net profit before interest times 100 divided by capital employed. So ROCE is directly proportional to NPBI. The higher is the net profit, the higher will be the ROCE. As we know, the profit for the year is high for VPLC. Hence, ROCE is also high for VPLC, which shows that VPLC is able to generate more profit by using the capital invested in VPLC more efficiently. Thus, even though MPLC is having a higher gross margin, it is not able to make a higher profit for the year because of high expenses and hence it is not able to provide higher return on capital employed when compared to PPLC. In the debate of the question, we are asked to analyze the performance of both the companies by considering the other ratios. So after ROC, we have gearing ratio and for the gearing ratio, we have a thumb rule that companies having a gearing ratio of more than 50% are in high risk zone and companies having a gearing ratio below 50% are in low risk zone. And as the information given here states that for MPLC, the gearing ratio is 0% and for VPLC, it is 15%. Hence, both the company are having a gearing ratio below 50% hence both of them are at a low risk level however for MPLC the gearing ratio is 0% we calculate gearing ratio by using the formula gearing ratio is equal to fixed cost capital divided by total capital in fixed cost capital we have all the non-current liabilities plus the preference share capital we know for MPLC there is no preference share capital as no preference shares were issued and when MPLC is having a gearing ratio of 0%, it indicates that it is not having any non-current liabilities as well. Then earning per share, earning per share, we have a formula that earning per share is equal to net profit minus preference share dividend divided by number of issued ordinary shares. So earning per share is directly proportional to net profit. And from bit C of the question, we know that the net profit for VPLC is more than MPLC as the profit margin for VPLC was more than MPLC. Hence, the earning per share for VPLC is better than MPLC. As the information states that for MPLC, the earning per share which was calculated in bit B was 18 cents and for VPLC, it is 20 cents thereby for VPLC, the earning per share is more than MPLC. Price earning ratio, we have a formula for price earning ratio as price earning ratio is equals to market price per share divided by earning per share. That is price earning ratio is directly proportional to market price per share and the higher is the market price, the price earning ratio will be more. And when the market price per share will be high, when the investors are more confident about the future expansion as well as the profit earning capacity of the company. Hence, the information which given here states that for MPLC, the price earning ratio is 8.89 times which was calculated in the bid view of the question and for VPLC, it is 12.5%. That means the investors are willing to pay a higher market price for VPLC as they are more confident in the future of VPLC when compared to MPLC. Then 
dividend covered for dividend cover we have the formula that is dividend cover is equals to profit available to pay the ordinary dividend divided by the ordinary dividend paid we know that the profit for vplc is higher from the c bit of the question as the profit for vplc is higher hence the dividend cover for vplc is better than mplc hence the information given states that mplc the dividend cover is 2.5 Two five times, which was calculated in the bit B of the question, and for VPLC it is four times. Hence, VPLC is having a higher dividend cover ratio when compared to MPLC. Furthermore, additional information is provided, which states that Pep, an investor, is considering investing in either MPLC or VPLC. He is looking for a low risk investment, which pay him a regular income with the potential for growth in both annual dividends and share price. In the last bit of the question, we are asked to advise Pep in which of the two companies he should invest, and we have to justify our answer. I have advised Pep to invest in VPLC because all the investment ratios except the gross margin is high in VPLC when compared to MPLC, and there is also a low risk as the ROC is high in VPLC, so the investment will fetch him more profit in future as they are using the capital more efficiently. Furthermore, future dividend income is more secure as dividend cover is high in VPLC when compared to MPLC. And however, there is one drawback that information which is provided to us is only for one year. Hence, there may be a certain degree of uncertainty on the basis of our suggestion. Hence, he should first take up a trend analysis where he can analyze the trend of. the pass for vplc and then make the final decision with this we have completed this question thanks for watching my videos and have a great life